All right, so we are learning today about what happens next to the Israelites because they got the instructions for the tabernacle last week. Tabernacle? Tabernacle, which is like the church. Oh. And now, remember I told you last week there was an altar where they had to make sacrifices? We're going to learn about those sacrifices this week. Trenton, in your chair. Uh -huh. When Moses was with God on Mount Sinai, God gave him many laws. These laws show the people what it looks like to live a holy life. God is holy and he cannot be around sin. But the Israelites could not keep God's laws perfectly. So God met with Moses in the tabernacle. He gave the people rules about how to live, how to worship God, and what to do when they sin. First, God gave rules about offerings. Offerings are gifts people give to God, such as money or jewelry. Sometimes offerings included animals. People could also give grain and bread as offerings. Different types of offerings were needed at different times. When people wanted to praise God, they gave burnt offerings. When they wanted to say they were sorry for sin, they gave a sin offering. God also gave rules about the priests. Priests made the sacrifices that God commanded. The priests took care of the tabernacle, and they taught the people God's rules for living holy lives. Aaron and his sons served as the priests. God gave them rules about how to offer sacrifices. God told Moses about a special day that would happen once a year. It was called the Day of Atonement. Atonement means making right what had been wrong. The people needed to atone for their sin to make their relationship with God right again. On the Day of Atonement, the people paid for their sins. The high priest offered a special sacrifice. He took the blood of an animal and went into the most holy place, a very special room in the tabernacle. Then the high priest sprinkled the blood on the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant, which was a wooden box covered in gold that contained the stone tablets on which the Ten Commandments were written. The sacrifice was important because it paid for the sins of the people of Israel. God said, on that day, your sin will be paid for. You will be made pure and clean. You will be clean from all of your sins in my sight. God also gave the Israelites rules about how they should live. He said, be holy because I, Yahweh, your God, am holy. God told the people what it is to be holy. God said, do not tell lies. Do not cheat. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. The sacrifices God required of his people were a hint of what God was going to do to forgive sinners. We no longer need to offer sacrifices because we trust in Jesus. Jesus offered himself as the perfect sacrifice that takes away our sin once and for all. Okay. All right. So this is a kind of confusing thing to talk about because there's nothing, 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 nothing like it around us uh, like this. And what I mean is, you know, like, if I tell you to pray, you're probably going to be like, oh, I kind of know about prayer because I've seen it on a movie before, or my mom or dad pray, or something like that. But this, I think my flashlight is on. Hold on. Does not. I don't think so. I just think it turns. Oh, well. It's recording, so that's the important part. Okay. I'll just have a light shining in my face. Which, hi to all of y'all at home. Okay, yeah. so so if I say pray, you kind of know something about that. Yeah. Okay? If I say, like there's a lot of kids at your school that have never <laughs> been to church. Ever. Okay? Like some of the teenagers will bring friends and they're like, I've never been to church. What do you do here? You guys kind of know what church is like. You've driven by churches. Some kids have never been to them. So this is a new concept for you. Offering sacrifices. You don't do that at your church, okay? Now, you don't know this, but your parents or your grandparents or whoever brings you, they probably offer a sacrifice, but not an animal or grain or bread, but money, okay? You remember how they said sometimes they would bring money as an, as an offering or a sacrifice? That's normally the kind of sacrifice we make. We say, okay, you know, I'm going to give God a tenth, of my money and bring it to the church and give it to the church. That's our kind of offering. Get in a seat, please. 
So, why did these people need to bring sacrifices? Well, let's start with the beginning, okay? The whole purpose of God making this tabernacle is he wanted to meet with the people, okay? And he wanted them to love him, and he wanted them to worship him, and he wanted to be important to them because he was doing so much for them, right? So the first thing we need to look at is this book of Exodus that we're looking at. The beginning of Exodus is where they come out of slavery, and God does all these amazing, amazing, amazing things for them. He provides water. He provides food. He provides, you know, uh, tents for them to live in. He helps them get across the Red Sea. He does all these amazing things. And then we get to chapter 20. So 1 through 19 is really talking about all these amazing things he's done for them. He rescued them from slavery, and he's done all these amazing things. Then we get to chapter 20, and chapter 20 and chapter 21... Um, is where it talks about the Ten Commandments, okay? So he's telling them, this is how you need to live. Let me see this. I think, that's 20. Make sure I get the right. Uh, no, 10 through 23. 10 through 23. You're right, that is 20. 10 through 23 chapters, he's talking all about how you need to live, okay? So this is you. This is God, all the things he did, amazing miracles. This is what you need to do. Then we get to chapter 23 or 24 and all the way through the rest of the book, which is 30, uh, 40 chapters. So 24 to 40, it's all about worship. The offerings or the sacrifices and the tabernacle. How to build the tabernacle. Well, taber. I don't think you know how to spell that. Thanks, Liam. Taber. Okay, so what is important to God? We'll do that in a minute. What is important to God? Is it most important the rules you live by and how you follow and being a good person? Yeah. You think that's the most important thing to God? No. No, because look, he only gave us two little chapters about that. No, we need, we need like the, um, the, we need for the, what, it'll be like 36 chapters. 36 here? Yeah. Well, 40, take away that? 24. I'm sorry, 14 and 16. Okay. So, anyway. here's what matters to God. You need to remember all the good things that he's done for us. He gave us 19 chapters about that. 19. There are rules for us to follow, yes. And God wants us to obey those rules. But some of us, and I'm raising my hand on this, some of us like to follow rules. Cash and Trenton, I'm going to wait for you all to get in your seats. Because Trenton, I've told you about six times, and you're still not in a chair. Cash, we can do that later. We're listening to the Bible right now, okay? Put it down. Thank you. Trenton, get in a chair. Get in a chair, get in a chair, get in a chair. Yeah. All right, so this is what you need to know about God from, from what we're learning today. Because, guys, this is old, okay? I could tell you, hey, you need to bring some doves to make a, a peace offering. I could teach you about the, the goat that is brought. But all that really doesn't apply to y'all. Because y'all don't have to do that anymore. Because Jesus came and died for us. So when we want forgiveness, all we have to do is ask Jesus in our heart. And he comes in and he cleans it all away. Okay? So first, what we're going to focus on, what is important to God here? God wants me to remember all the good things he's done for me. Do I have shoes on my feet? Yes, yes. Do I have food in my belly? Did I get to eat yes. something today? Yes. Yeah. Did I have a warm place to sleep? Yes. Yeah. Did I have family members that loved me and helped me and took care of me the last no. week? No. Yes. No. So I have a lot of good things that God has given me. And God has done some amazing things for me. And we're going to talk about the most amazing thing in just a minute. But then, yes, there are rules I need to follow. But like I was saying earlier, I will raise my hand to say, sometimes as a kid, Cash, keep your feet to yourself. 
as a kid and as an adult, I like to focus more on this. Let me follow the rules because if I obey the rules and I do right and I'm a good person and I help and I love and I obey and I obey and I obey, then God is going to give me all these good things because I'm a good person. And sometimes when stinky, hey, Jaden, don't do that. Sometimes when stinky things happen in life, like our power goes out or our air conditioner gets broke or our water faucet breaks, I'm thinking, oh, well, God, I've really been trying to be a good person. And God says, that's not how it works. See, you're supposed to obey the rules because you love me. Just like with your parents. Your parents aren't trying to be, make you the best kid ever. They're not like, hey, I just want you to be the most awesomest kid and look like you're the best behaved and walk like this. No. They want you to obey them because they love you. They want to keep you safe. They want you to have a good, happy, long life. And they know if you go jump off a building, you might die. So they're like, let's give you some rules. Well, that would okay. yeah, Maybe. But, but they love you. God wants us to follow the rules because we love him. Then he gives us all this about the tabernacle. How are we supposed to worship God? How are we supposed to sacrifice to God? How are we supposed to love God? What are we supposed to do? Now, it's different for us because we don't live in the time where they made those sacrifices. If Eliza had to bring one of her goats that she loved, she'd been taking care of and raising to the priest and say, here's my goat. This is our sin offering. You can sacrifice it. She would be sad. Like, I'm sure all those boys and girls and family members were like, but Daddy, do we really have to give that goat? And he was like, well, that goat or that sheep is without blemish. It doesn't have any problems. It's a good, clean goat, so we got to give it. You know, or maybe your birds or whatever. They had to make sacrifices. But this is what happened for us. Okay? But 2,000 years, Jesus came and he died on a cross. Now, I'm going to tell you something really cool that I just learned this week. Just learned this week. You remember when it showed you on the video that they went into the Holy of Holies? Uh -huh. And last week we drew a picture of the tabernacle. Yeah. And we said the box that was in there was like called the Ark of the Covenant. And on top of it, there were two cherubim. I cannot draw, so you're going to pretend. That were like angels. And their wings were spread out like this. Okay? Jaden, 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 Jaden. You're shaking the phone. Stop. You're casting high to the camera. Okay, so they're shut. Turn around. So there's there there are these two angels, and their wings are like going to meet each other over the mercy seat. Now remember, who would come in to the holy of holies? One high priest would come in and come into the holy of holies, and who would come in there though and meet with them? God. God. Now let me show you something cool. I just learned this this week. Because I read my Bible every day, and I'm still learning. I learn stuff all the time. Okay, Jesus died on the cross. Okay? He did that God, to pay Jesus for our cross. sins. But God, remember, always was coming down, dwelling in the tabernacle. I want my people to see me, the God, cloud, God, the fire the above the tabernacle. Like, I'm coming because I love them, and I want to meet with them. Jesus came to earth to meet with us. He died on a cross. Then they put him in the tomb, right? And he's in there buried in that tomb for three days. He comes back alive. And then when they, they, God rolls the stone away. There's the rock stone away. Now there had been two guards guarding that tomb because they didn't want anybody to come and steal Jesus' body. Okay? They wanted to make sure he stayed in the grave. But there was an earthquake and the ground shakes and these angels appear and the soldiers like, were stunned and fell down and scared, and then they ran away because they know <gasps> we're going to get killed either way because Jesus' body's not in there anymore. They look in there, and the angels appear, but the body's gone. When Mary, who was the first person, well, Mary, Mary, and another Mary, and Joanna, when these women were the first ones to come to the tomb, they're just coming to put some spices on Jesus' body to make it smell a little better and things like that. That's what you did to dead bodies back then. But they come, and guess what they see when they come? They see two angels standing on either side of this tomb, 
And their wings, wow, that's Those good. Those like bunny ears. I know. Their wings are touching each other. Whoa. Oh my God. Just like the mercy seat of God, when he came to dwell, when they saw those two angels there, I mean, I got goosebumps. Because they immediately would have thought, wait a minute, for all I those years, God came to meet with us in the tabernacle. And we've been thinking, wait, is Jesus God? Is Jesus real? Did Jesus really, is Jesus really God? Well, now that he's died on the cross and he's rose, and we see these two angels, we can know oh, he really was God. And he really was here with us. And then, of course, they walk away and bam, there's Jesus. And Mary's like, thinking he's the gardener. Like, if you've seen the body or if you've seen Jesus, can you tell me where he is? And he goes, Mary. And immediately she's like, Jesus. Because she knew. She knew what his voice sounded like. When he said her name, she was like, Jesus. Like, oh my God. Like that. Blew my mind this week. Anyways, that, 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 you can say I learned something at age six or or ten that Miss Miranda didn't even know till she was forty two. Well, that was pretty cool. cool. That killed him. Okay. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Now I want to tell you about one more thing. Okay. When it was on the video, it was talking about the day of atonement. Shut that door. Okay. Jaden, sit down and move your chair out of the way. I have it. Get, down. Get your chair over there because you're right in the way. All right. So Jesus or God said one of the things they need to do is they need to have a day of atonement every year. So once a year, you're going to have a day of atonement. Now what that means is on that one day, you are going to get forgiven for all your sins. Everybody in the whole camp of these Israelite people. Now, you still had to bring sin offerings when you did certain things or whatever. But this one day, they were going to have all their sins forgiven. And they were going to bring a goat. And they were going to take this goat and they were going to kill it. Now, they were going to have two goats. Hold on. Hold on. They were going to have one goat that they killed. And they took the blood and they sprinkled it on this mercy seat. Oh. And God would meet with them, and they knew, God told us, all of our sins are going to be forgiven. The other goat, they put like a red cord around its neck, like not to squeeze it, but just like a little red ribbon kind of thing. And they just let it go. It was called the scapegoat, okay? So that's a tradition that they did. And I'll tell you later when Jesus gets crucified. About that scapegoat thing. So, the Day of Atonement, all their sins get forgiven. Okay? Now, with Jesus, the really, really cool thing about Jesus is when you ask Jesus into your heart, all your sins are forgiven from the day you were born. Here you are, little bitty baby. Okay? All the way until you die. Okay? You're dead. Okay? All your sins are forgiven from the past, the present, and the future. If you ask Jesus in your heart, that's a pretty cool deal. Because, you know, I've been trying to follow the rules and be a good person. But, you know, one day I may just become a crazy, crazy person and decide to go out and rob a bank. Yeah. This but is because I've asked Jesus in my heart, my sins are forgiven. Now, if I go out and I kill somebody, and then I kill somebody else, and I kill somebody else, y'all are all going to start to think, I don't think she really had Jesus in her heart. Because, like we talked about earlier, we're supposed to love God by following his rules. And if we start disobeying, disobeying, disobeying all the time, it's really hard to think that I love God. Okay? So, my sins are forgiven completely. Okay? And that song we were singing, now his blood flows through my veins. That sounds kind of gross. But the cool thing is, is when God looks down at my heart. Wait just a minute. Wait. When God looks down at my heart, he sees clean heart. It's like his blood has covered my heart or like his blood is going through my veins, which it's really not. But it's kind of like that. Like I'm clean. I'm forgiven. Okay. I don't have to go sacrifice a goat. I don't have to go do anything. All I have to do is pray and say, dear God, I know I am a sinner. Jaden Mullins. 
I know I'm a sinner. I know you died to forgive my sin, and I ask you to come in my heart and clean my heart. And he does it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. The easiest thing ever. That's why I did it. Jaden, Jaden, wait. I did it when I was five years old. I remember we were on our way to church Sunday night because we'd been to church that morning, and Sunday night we're on our way to church. My mom is driving, and I'm sitting in the car, and I said, Mom, I'm going to go to hell. And she was like, what? And I said, I'm going to go to hell. And she goes, oh, uh, well, why? And I said, because I don't have Jesus in my heart. And she said, well, what do you need to do? And I said, I need to ask him in my heart. And she said, okay. And she asked me a few questions because she wanted to make sure I understood. And she pulled the car over. And right there on the side of the road, she said, do you want me to pray the prayer and you follow me? And I said, no, I know how to do it. And she said, okay. And I prayed right there on the side of the road, and I asked Jesus to come in my heart, and I asked him to clean my heart. And he's been in there ever since. So, it's so easy. Your brothers and sisters, your, your cousins who are young, they can do it. God didn't want to make it hard, okay? And even if you think about it, to bring a goat, if you love your goat, that would be hard. But most of us aren't in love with a goat. So we, if the if the priest sacrifices a goat and sprinkles the blood on the altar, and now I'm forgiven, I'm thinking, I didn't even have to do I'm anything. Good, that was pretty easy because God is the one who does the work. God's the one who forgives. All right. Okay. So that's the end of our story about yes about our uh, the sacrifices and the offerings that we're supposed to make. Why are you now, doing a boo -boo? We've only got. Like two more weeks and we're done with Moses. We get to move on to like Joshua. Are they praying? Okay. We get to move on to Joshua, which is a fierce leader. Now we're about to play a game with some balloons. Let me show the kids at home how we're going to play this so that if they want to play as they can. I am going to give Skylar Trenton, listen. I'm going to give two people a push pin. So if you're at home, maybe your mom and dad could have a push oh, we pin. This game before. We have. No, and then I'm going to bop a balloon up. And we're going to pretend that we're like the Israelites. And one person is going to be the Egyptian. Get out of the way of the camera. And one person is going to be the Israelites. And we're going to get on our hands and knees. And I'm going to bop a balloon up. And we're going to try to keep our fears away. Like we sang that song earlier, I'm no longer a slave to fear. Because God's done all these good things. For us, we shouldn't be afraid. So we're going to bop the balloon no, up, and then our I'm going to explain it to y'all. All right, let me turn the video. Bye, guys. I got it, I got it. You got it, you got it.